thing is until you can erase three february's shut up Bang! quality over quantity lebron has beaten some of the best competition in nba history he's the goat emoji i will not cuss i will not cuss i will not swear i will not swear where sports is the base life and fun are the results this is the brian snow show it most certainly is. And we're at our new time of 6 p.m. Eastern, soon to be 8 p.m. Eastern, on a new station that has picked us up. Good evening, everybody. Brian Snow is here with you, and I'm a little worn out from celebrating today. Because of the big news that I revealed this morning on Snowman in the morning is I am in remission from my fight with pancreatic cancer. So the fight has been won. Now I got a lot of stuff to catch up on, catch you guys up on because I haven't had a chance to do this show. I never, let me just be real. I never made the opportunity because physically I was tired. Mentally I was tired with everything that was going on. And I didn't think I could handle two shows within a day turns out I can with the right scheduling which is now in my wife's hands and um, with the right motivation so this is my motivation and I'm going to tell you guys right now there will be a new GoFundMe for myself and my family that will come out tomorrow at four o'clock the Patreon for the network is going to get cleaned up and when I say cleaned up, it's really going to, it's going to get a major, I pushed the plunger on it and have basically reloaded it. I'll release that at five o'clock tomorrow. This evening, I will welcome Mac McGee from Braves Country HD, which you can hear all over the Southeast. And you can also watch on uh, YouTube. He is going to come on at the quarter of the hour. We're going to talk some baseball and we're going to talk some other sports and I'm excited to have him. He will be a weekly guest. Uh, Tonight, we'll start it, and then we'll flip it to Monday nights. So, and I anticipate... I had to get a drink there. I anticipate uh, this show uh, going to two hours. And uh, with uh, WQEE... I've got a two hour slot. I got a two hour show for you. If you would like to pick this, pick this show up. I'd love to be on your station. Uh, my next question is, how can we get that done? Uh, let me say hi to some people. Speaking of WQEE, awesome appreciation of Braves uh, Country, Braves County HD. Hey, thank you all for having me. Oh, man. Why is that Hefe? Hey, brother. Hey, to you, 
and the awesome work you're doing with mentality and the awesome work that uh, you're doing with the Stuck in My Mind podcast. I remember the beginnings myself of recording something and then, you know, not being able to 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 put it out there. So I put something out there and I get an immediate response. Let's speak soon. Hey, tonight, if you're available, because as soon as I finish this show, I'm going to tear the set down and just pick some just get some stuff in order. And like I said, I'd love to, if it's possible, have both my shows on your station. The big dog Shane Link out of Maine joining us this evening. Eric Collins from my hometown of Chicago joining us here as well. As I mentioned, at uh, 15 after the hour, I will welcome uh, uh, Mac McGee uh, to join us. And speaking of joining us, my uh, little kitten Winnie is now off my desk. She just has this thing of uh, appearing. All right, let me catch y'all up on some things. You know the big news. I am cancer-free. It's taken a while. But uh, you guys' prayers and good words and, uh, man, pieces of advice on uh, what to eat, when to eat, and it's the when to eat that has slowed down my battle with diarrhea. And Doc thinks that all this diarrhea I'm going through is a post-op issue. And I'm thinking that's the case also. I've gotten back into taking my taking my meds at night. I was afraid to take them because I thought I would have an accident in the bed. Let me be real. But uh, been clear the last uh, five nights. So it's when I eat and when I let the food process and will tell me when I go to bed because I have to allow as late as the latest I can eat is eight o'clock because I have to, I give myself three hours since I don't have a pancreas right now. Um, since it uh, also, since I don't have a pancreas and there's a few other organs missing uh, on my left side, I've got to change my timing on when everything processes and when everything goes through. Because the most embarrassing thing that I've gone through, let me just go ahead and say it. Most embarrassing thing I've gone through is having an accident in the bed. You know, never had to deal with it until now. And now I know what a lot of people go through. I know what a lot of people are going through. Uh, Shane Lake, when things settle, we will talk soon about that. The first thing we need to do is an unfiltered episode. You're on. You're absolutely on. Had a great show this afternoon. I know you did. I I know you did. I expect nothing less than the be, than the best of wise. I expect nothing less from my friends who are in the radio slash video slash podcast business to give nothing but their best. And there's one person I need to shout out, and that is Cole Johnson, who, quote unquote, gave me my flowers on the recent episode of Mentality, which you can catch on um, Snowman Multimedia Radio. The new station will come out in full on the 1st of March. Uh, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Otero, a.k.a. Wise El Jefe. I could not do this without y'all. There's just no way I could do this without you. Let me hand out some flowers to everyone that's in the chat who has wished me well and who has sent their prayers to me and my family, my beautiful wife, Jody, my children, my grandchildren, keeping me going. I mean it when I say this, I couldn't do this without y'all. Professor Sutton, what's going on? I couldn't do this without, I could not have done this without you guys. When there were days, and I mean this from the heart, when there were days I wanted to say, screw it and quit, each one of you, each one of you got a hold of me 
and said, you're not quitting. You know, um, the big dog, Shane Lake, one of my best friends for about eight years now. Nine, nine, because you met in 2014. We are brothers. Now, I consider everyone a brother and a sister that comes in my life and shows their true love and their true spirit for me. I could not have done this without you guys. Like I said, every time I felt like giving up, one of you would reach out to me and say, no, you don't. You're not allowed. That right there is the push that I needed. Lord knows I got it from Jody and my children, and I get it from them every day. On days where I'm just absolutely exhausted, you know, my wife would get me up and said, just let's just go take a walk. We got to get you moving. And lately I have been moving a lot. Walking around the house, walking around outside of the house with uh, my little dog, Lucy. And of course, y'all seen y'all have seen Winnie who pops in every now and then. There's no way in hell I'm going to quit now. Especially with the uh, WQEE in Atlanta, you know, saying let's talk soon about uh, picking up my show. WLEO in Baltimore will air this show on a tape delay basis until we can figure out how I can broadcast to them live. And that may take a second time change. You know, I got stations picking up Snowman in the morning, and they see it's a. Uh, Produced by Snowman Multimedia and Comey Media. Real Wise Productions has a big hand in it, too. Now, I say a big hand, I mean that. But more than the companies that are involved, it's you guys. I cannot, could not, and will not do this without you guys. Period. I just can't do it without you. And the one person, and y'all heard me speak about her so many times over. My beautiful bride, Jody, Who made the decision for us to move from North Carolina back here to Indiana for a second opinion on what's going on with my cancer. We drove back down to North Carolina on November 29th, and we were told by the cancer doctors there for me to get my affairs in order because I was basically dying. You know how hard of a sucker punch that is from one of the most prominent cancer centers in the country, let alone the world, to be told that the tumor I had was inoperable. And my wife, bless her heart and soul, said, no way, that ain't happening. So that's when we hooked up with... Uh, my current oncologist, Dr. Raghunath. And he said, let me make a phone call and see what I can do. Well, that's when I met uh, Attila Nakib. And he said, I'll get it for you. I will get this thing for you. He did. And it leads to today. The news that we got this morning. That. Uh, we we did it. We did it, y'all. We did it. I, I can't say it enough. We did it. And I say we because I include not just my family. I include you guys in the chat. And as Dave Martinez said, 
in 2019. We stayed in the fight. We won the fight. We won the fight. We won the fight. And we'll keep winning every day. We will keep winning every day. Let me bring on my guests for the evening. Mr. Max McGee, sporting the old school brave uniform, which I love. Takes me back to Fulton County Stadium. Good evening, my friend. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? I'm doing great, man. Oh, let's see. There you go. There you go. Let's fly the let's fly the A, man. <laughs> great, great show. Great, great show this afternoon. I was thrilled and honored to be a part of it. Yes, sir. And pitchers and catchers report doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. That means baseball is right around the corner. And I said right after the Super Bowl, okay, football's done. Can we have baseball now? My wife started laughing. My daughter started laughing. But it's it's fun when those import those important in your life know how much baseball means to you. And for me, it's my dad and my granddad that got me started in baseball. Yeah, absolutely. I I think most people who are uh, baseball fans, honestly, I think most of us it is a it's a family thing. Yeah. Now now football and basketball and whatnot can always end up just being a uh, you know friends. Or yes. what uh, you know, you you know, you go to school and you maybe you become a fan of, of that college team. But as far as major right. league football is concerned, I I really think that's a family thing. It's it's the whole reason why I I became such a huge baseball fan. My mom was from Brooklyn, and so she, so she grew up going to the Dodgers games when right. you know Jackie Robinson and Dem Bums were playing mm -hmm. stadium. And my dad happened to be a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, even though he was down in Florida at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, that was kind of a bond that they had when they first met. But yeah, I, my, uh, my grandfather who grew up watching the Dodgers in the early 1900s. Yeah. The day he died, he referred to him as the great Brooklyn Dodgers, even after they moved out West. Right. And they were always the hated the hated New York baseball giants, even though they were playing in San Fran. <laughs> yeah. My, my mother loved the, the Brooklyn Dodgers. And as I told you uh, on your show earlier today, my dad and my granddad were born on the South side of Chicago. So South side baseball is in their blood. And that's how they got me to be a white Sox fan. They took me to my first game in 82 at old Comiskey park. And I remember some of the players, such as Carlton Fisk, such as Lamar Hoyt, such as Richard Dotson. And they I'll were tell you, playing my favorite the White Sox was at that at that very time. That was about the time I started watching baseball. You remember the Bull, Greg Lazinski? Yeah, I, that name just popped in my head. I yeah. loved I love watching him swing the bat. Love watching him swing the bat. I just thought it was funny that a fat guy was that good at in baseball. Yeah. The, and he, the, he the next even year, my dad at that age. So I was in the, the next year, 83, when we won the West Division, he put three of them up on the roof at yeah. Okabiski Park. And I was there those separate games to see them all. Those are still some of my favorite baseball uh jerseys of all time. The yeah. The, the old the jerseys. Year. I'm not a big fan of, of their current jerseys, but the mm -hmm. old ones that just had the well, because to me, the the logo that they had looked like the MLB logo that they were just using. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyways, I, I'm i a sucker for the... In fact, somewhere in here, I'll have to dig it up. But anyways, I've got a uh, an old White Sox uh, helmet in here somewhere. Nice. And it's like, I don't think it has the actual... The actual... Uh, uh, you know, the the logo mm -hmm. but it's a hat from it's a it's a ball cap from or a not a ball cap a uh batting helmet from from that era because it's the blue helmet with the white letters and the red yes belt. yes i love it i that's the era that really got me hooked the win and ugly era with those with with those uniforms and someone asked me recently who is my favorite white Sox player of all time and i'm telling i told him i got too many he said, well, you have to pick one. 
Right. If I got to pick one, it would be the legendary Frank Thomas. Oh, yeah. I, I, and I love Frank in the booth, too. Right. Yeah. And he's he, he's he's phenomenal. I hate the fact that to get to Frank Thomas, you have to listen to A-Rod. But yeah, I, I hate that. I hate that. I, I I love the fact that Frank Thomas is now on a national show because he was on on the Chicago station for a while. But now he's on the national show and they got to go through A-Rod to get to Frank Thomas. Yeah. But I don't know what makes people think that A-Rod is is like appointment TV. I have no freaking idea. And then ESPN got caught caught into that terrible contract with them. So now they're trying to do the whole, uh, I call it Manning cast, but it's him, but it's him and Michael K. They're, they're, they're trying to, it's terrible. Make a rod into Stephen A. Smith and send him everywhere, but they just keep him for baseball and use the daylights out of him for baseball and newsflash. He's not that good. No, no, and, and the thing is, he, he's been so polarizing before he became a bro- broadcaster. Right, there are a lot right. of people like him across the board, and I I didn't understand it at the time when ESPN gave him such a long contract. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. if you want to give it a go and see what he can do. All right, they gave him such a long contract that the when the when the numbers crashed and burned, and they decided to to do away with that entire Sunday night crew. They yeah. had nowhere to put them because they didn't want to put them in the booth. So they said, "You know what? We're gonna we're gonna put you on. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna put you on there with Michael K. And I and I don't know how they got Michael K to agree to it, but it is just terrible. I've tried. To I don't know it. how they got Michael K to agree with it e- to agree to it either. And <clears throat> from what I'm heard, uh, what I'm hearing, that show, the Michael K show, is ending pretty soon. You're talking about the radio show? Yes. Well, he's getting killed in the ratings in New York by Carton and Roberts. Well, that and 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 the number one show there is uh, Boomer and Geo. Boomer and Geo. Yep. So he's getting murdered in the in the ratings. He's he's doing worse than ESPN Radio, which is hard to do. That's something. That yeah, is so, that is something. That's crazy. ESPN Radio has never rebounded <clears throat> from when Mike and Mike broke up. They yeah, that was, all, their demi- that was their demise. They tried all kinds of combinations, but everything that they did is just, man, I I don't even know what the show is called, but their morning show, it's atrocious. I've tried watching it. I, I don't even know if they even put it on anymore, but they used to try to put it on ESPN2 or ESPN News, and you'd tune in, and it was just the just most god-awful casting that they could come up with. Are you talking about Get Up? No, 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 no. The uh, actual radio show that comes oh, out. Oh, Keyshawn, like, J. Will, Keyshawn J. Will and Max. Jay Williams, and then there's always yep. a revolving third or fourth person. Yeah, right? Keyshawn, Keyshawn J. Will and Max is their now. Not, yeah, Max Cal- well, what, when they went to him, I was like, there's no way I'm trying it. But when they first started, it, there, there was another cat that was doing it with them. I can't remember his name, but he... Mm-hmm. They thought he was the problem. So once again, they're 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 stuck in a long contract with Kellerman. So yeah. they're trying to find somewhere to put him. But and they killed his ra- they killed his radio show. They yanked his radio show out from under him before he could get started. Right. And they and they ended up moving him to to the the morning show because they're basically just trying to save money. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they really wanted to kill two birds with one stone, they'd put him and A-Rod on the same show, hide it on ESPN News on you know at 4 o'clock in the morning and just call it a day. Like, like they do with Jalen and Jacoby. And, and guess who's got another prime slot back? Mike Greenberg. Now, Mike where Greenberg is he at back, now? back late mornings from like 10 to noon. On radio? On radio and on, um, I want to say ESPN too. Is he not on uh, Get Up anymore? Oh, he does. He does that too. Okay. Well, I think that was a situation. Well, I always thought it was odd that he was going from eight to ten, and then noon to whatever it was two or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'd always see that. I'm like, man, why wouldn't you want to just try to get it all done at once, right? Right. But right. the few times that I flip over to Get Up every once in a while, I never see him on there anymore. Like it's, it's, it's rare. I don't know if he just got a lot of vacation well, time or well, he's all over, well, he's all over the place too, because now he's in charge of uh, the NBA pregame show. 
And he what? hosts the NBA pregame show for the finals. So he's all over the place. And we're all over the place. So we're going to stop and take a break. And when we come back, we'll continue to be all over the place. That's Matt McGee from Braves County HD. And you're Shirley Brian Snow on the Brian Snow Show this evening. We'll be back. The thing is, until you can erase three Februaries, shut up. Where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is The Brian Snow Show. The original Think Drink is back. Level up with proven ingredients formulated to crush your competition. No gimmicks, no jitters, no messing around. Just high potency results that keep you moving day or night. There's a new nerd in town, and we came to play. Nerd Focus, smarter than energy. So this thing called sports, it has fans again. It has full stadiums, full arenas, and more. And you want to be a part of it, don't you? Of course you do. If you begin to scour the resale market, there will be tickets available. And what you need to get those tickets that you want so badly is SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the app available to you that lends a hand in helping you get the tickets that you want for the events that you want. SeatGeek rates the tickets on a 1 to 10 scale, and the best part is the tickets are vetted for authenticity so you know what you are getting and you know you are not getting scammed. And now you can save even more by using the code SNOWMAN and getting 20 bucks off with your very first purchase. Yes, you can do all of that with the power of SeatGeek, helping you get to the games that you want so you fans can fan. So let's all fan. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Do you like pricking your fingers to test your blood sugar levels? No one does, but it's important to maintain your health. And now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you don't need to prick your fingers anymore. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar three or more times daily, injecting insulin, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now. And if you have Medicare or most major insurance coverage, you may be able to get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar three or more times daily, injecting insulin or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how to end the painful finger sticks and get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. tuning into the brian snow show where sports is the base life and fun are the results yep. it is me, the brian snow show. back on the air and i love you guys for sticking with me matt mcgee joins me representing the atlanta braves and let's talk a little baseball let's talk about your braves Okay, so you lose Dansby Swanson to free agency. Now what? <laughs> well, the sky's not falling. What are you doing? What I know. Doing I know. I, that's why I put it. That's why I put it in that form of a question. Just well, look. Up? Here's the deal. The last couple of seasons, we've lost two of the cornerstones of the franchise. But that's what it is being in Braves country mm -hmm. is you've got you're sitting in a division with, with the Phillies and the Mets where it looks like the sky is the limit as, as far as their spending ability. The right. Braves, conversely, are doing, a, doing things a little differently, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And though they are getting to that, that, that first threshold, the 230 – ish 233 238 threshold right. they're not gonna go blowing through 
there was a report out last week that said that the Mets, after taxes, their payroll is going to be up s- somewhere up around four hundred sixty million dollars. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think they got any better. I no. don't think they're any better than what they were last year, and they came in second in the division. And they won a hundred games in doing so. Losing Swanson to the Cubs, we do have a young kid in the name of Vaughn Grissom that's going to step in, All and right. he gets a pretty good success last year. And I think you'll see him, it won't be a full platoon situation, but I think you'll see him take some days off and have a veteran of Orlando Arcia play short, who's very good defensively and has power in the bat. Now, where would they bat? Where would they bat those guys? Is there a certain part of the order where they would put them? I would say opening day to start off, you're looking at Vaughn Grissom, probably you're starting shortstop, and he's probably batting ninth. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he's a rookie, you there. So, so there's two school of thoughts or why you want him at ninth. First of all, he's unproven. Second of all, if you're batting ninth in the Atlanta Braves lineup, the guy on deck is Acuna. Yeah, and you're going to get a lot of fastballs to see. Mm-hmm. They're not going to pitch around you, et cetera, et cetera. The last thing they want to do is put you on base. And With Acuna coming up, right. I think you'll see him bat ninth opening day, assuming he is the starter. It mm-hmm. could be Arcia. You could see a straight platoon situation, but I think they're going to give Vaughn Grissom every opportunity. And for for people who aren't familiar with him, he's a young kid, 22 years old, came up uh, midway through the season last year. We first came up, it was during the Ozzy Albies injury right after that, and he uh, hit a monster bomb in Fenway Park. To kind mm-hmm. of put him on the map in Braves country. Yeah. And he had a meteoric rise and then and he kind of struggled down the stretch. When we struggled down the stretch, they ended up putting him on the bench. Mm-hmm. Ozzy Albies came back. He only comes back for a couple of days and he jams his finger and fractures his finger. And he's done for the season once again. Oh, man. So when that happened, they kind of had to do some juggling and Grissom kind of was the odd man, st- odd man out. Mm-hmm. Or- Arcia played a lot of second, but but Arcia was a was a shortstop for the Brewers before they made the trade for Adamas a couple of years ago. So yeah, he can pick it, and he plays phenomenal defense, and he does have a power bat. He's just a guy that you know what his ceiling is. Whereas it looks like Grissom might be the next big thing. Who's the next big thing for you guys in your rotation? How is your rotation going to look? Well, right now, what we're looking at, I believe the opening day starter will be Max Freed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. I, I think the number two guy is probably going to be Strider. Yeah. But I could see them putting him at three because they, they, they may want to temper his, uh, his pitches. But, but if you're going off of ability mm-hmm. and you're going off of what they did last year, it's Freed, Strider. It's going to be Kyle Wright in the, in the three spot. Charlie mm-hmm. Morton's going to be your four. And the number five spot, that's the biggest question going into spring training for the Atlanta Braves. We've got basically three guys that could fill that role. Ian Anderson, who was the game, would have been the game seven starter in the World Series in 2021. He was that well thought if he just fell off a cliff last year and it was yeah. big control. You've got Mike Soroka, who was an all-star that has had two eight, uh, Achilles injuries. Mm-hmm. And he, so, so he's, this is his first healthy spring since 2019. And the kid's only 25 years old. And then wow. the other guy that I think may be the leader in the clubhouse right now, just because he had such a great finish to the 2022 season is Bryce Elder. And the, the maturation of him and the depth with, with Soroka allowed the Braves to move Kyle Muller in the trade over to the A's that brought in the all-star catcher in Sean Murphy. Talking with Matt McGee from Braves Country HD, taking a peek inside the crystal ball for the 2021 season. Give me a couple of key bats in your lineup that uh, can – push the Braves over the top and get them to the division title again. Well, there's two guys that they're going to be adding to the lineup this year that they didn't have last year in theory. 
Number one is a healthy Ronald Acuna Jr. Mm -hmm. He came off that torn ACL, and they were monitoring his injury all year long. Every time you'd think that he was getting on, you know, you know, really starting to catch fire, they'd have to give him two or three days off because his knee was barking at him. Right. And he was he was quoted as saying this morning that this is the first time in two years that he's felt like him and he's mm-hmm. excited because he feels healthy, et cetera. So that's number one. You're talking about a guy that last year with Acuna, remember, he's only a couple of years removed from almost being a 40-40 guy. Right, right. right. But last year, he didn't live up to those expectations because of the injuries. Last year, what, what do you have, like 15 home runs, I think? 15, mm-hmm. And that's not Acuna. No. The other guy is, I mentioned him a second ago, Ozzy Albies essentially feels like he missed the entire season because he, he had the first be- injury. He comes back after, was it six, eight weeks on mm-hmm. the IR? Yeah. And as soon as he comes back two days later, he breaks his finger. So that's two guys right there in the lineup that they're, that they're basically adding that's going to make this this offense really go. And then, of course, you got Sean Murphy. I think the biggest thing in their offseason the Braves did was that they added an elite defensive catcher who in Oakland hit 18 home runs the last two seasons, right? Yeah. 18, 17, respectively. Mm-hmm. He's he's going to go from that big Grand Canyon in Oakland to – it's not quite a band box in Atlanta, but a much shorter porch. And mm-hmm. I think you can see 25 home runs out of, out of Murphy with ease this year. And he has got the number one rate in Major League Baseball, what they call pop rate, which means yeah. – when the ball pops the, the the glove at home plate to when the ball pops the glove at second base, he's he ranks number one in all of baseball. Man, and that's a that's a stat I've been paying attention to. You know, with the with 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 the catchers, let's look at your bullpen. Who is your big setup guy? That's going to be one of the big questions this spring as it unfolds. Uh, right now, I would say that you got two guys who are the leaders at the top of the of bullpen. You got a righty and a lefty. You got Rossiel Iglesias who came over in the trade from the angels and they've got him locked down for the next three seasons. And that was one of the reasons why they felt like they could let Kenley Jansen go mm-hmm. on the left hand side. It's AJ mentor. And he, he was the leader of that bullpen in 2021 he he was one of the main reasons why the braves won that world series and so you you got kind of that one-two punch but they added some guys in the off season and when when you look at guys now one one big minus that they're going to be missing is tyler matzik had tommy john surgery so he's right right but they've got some lefties that can definitely fill it in you're you're talking about dylan lee who who was big in the last two postseasons, and then they also brought in Lucas Lutge from from the Yankees in a minor trade, one of those ones that kind of goes under the radar. But mm-hmm. I, I really think that that could be a huge, huge deal. And a guy who, who can eat some innings from the left hand side. I don't expect him to be anything but a front of the bullpen guy, right? Games yeah. out of hand, one way or the other. Col- Colby Aller from that came over from the Rangers was a big get and Nick Anderson. If people remember Nick Anderson from the Rays a few yeah. years ago, Nick Anderson is going to be one of their setup guys. Well, March 30th, it all gets started when they visit the nation's capital to take on the nationals, uh, three games set one Oh five, four Oh five and one thirty five to finish that three game series on April the 2nd. And then you go to St. Louis for three April 3rd, 4th and 5th. And then your first home game, is the is the sixth so you begin with uh, six big ones on the road and one within the division with washington yeah and, and we'll have the call uh opening day 105 first pitch right here on the uh, braves country hd our plan is to do about three to four games a year uh, a week a- along with the with the daily show three to five p.m on uh, wqee and Braves Country HD if you're out of market. Um, that game, look, we got off to a terrible start last year, and it's one yeah. of the reasons why I think we failed in the playoffs because we spent a lot of energy chasing down the Mets mm-hmm. in the months of June, July, and August and September 
to when they finally got got and caught the Mets at the very end, and they won the division, and they had that week off. I they think it's like letting an air out of letting the air out of a balloon. They were spent. They, they need were, to get off to a, spent. right. They need to get off to a good start, and everybody knows it. And it can't get any better than going against what is arguably the worst team in baseball, the Washington Nationals. Mm -hmm. So, and they, you know, you hate saying it out loud because you feel like you're going to jinx something, but they've owned the Nationals. Let's be honest. They've owned them. Yeah, they have. And in Washington, you go back and look at the numbers. They're averaging eight, nine runs a game in Washington over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it'll be April. I assume it's going to be like in the 40s. Yep. All probably won't be flying, so it's going to be key for that pitching staff to really take off. You get seven at home after the six on the road, four with San Diego and three with Cincinnati. And you want to talk about a chance, you know, save the San Diego series to fatten up coming out of the gate. You get Washington for three. You get an unsure St. Louis Cardinals squad for three because – if you think about it, we don't know what the Cardinals are going to do division wise until midway through the season when they somehow figure their puzzle out. Yeah, I I think the Cardinals are one of the most fascinating teams of the offseason. And the main reason is because of the pitching staff, mm -hmm. because I do believe that the Cardinals every day, eight, every day, nine, if you want to count the designated hitters is, is as good as it gets in the NL Central. Right. But they're banking a lot on on the, the health of Jack Flaherty. Mm -hmm. And they got nothing from him last year. He he really hasn't been he the same thing. since 2019. Yeah. Who yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be honest, Jack Flaherty hasn't been dominant since 2019. So kind of in the same uh ilk as uh Mike Soroka, the only difference is Soroka's not expected to lead the rotation in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Flair is being penciled in right now as the opening day starter. Oh I, I I still think the Cardinals are going to go as far as Adam Wainwright takes them, essentially. Mm -hmm. Then you get three in Kansas City, the 14th through the 16th, so a chance to fatten up on another team that's, good, I, in my opinion, going to struggle this year. And then you go to San Diego for three, and then you get to see the world champion Houston Astros for three so after the three in kansas city it does not get easy no but we'll be looking forward to that that's turned into a little bit of a rivalry now with, with the braves beating the astros in the 21 series mm -hmm. and braves fans were looking forward to to hopefully have having yet a, another rematch with them maybe this year mm -hmm. you you wonder as far as the Astros go, I wonder how much fire is going to be left in their belly after, first of all, not just winning the World Series, but they've gone deep into the playoffs the last several years, right? They have. Eventually, that's got to take a wear on your on, on on everybody, but especially your pitching staff. I think about you know, in the NBA when you've seen it, where an NBA team makes deep runs in the playoffs, two, three, four years in a row. It's a battle of attrition. Eventually there comes a point where the legs aren't there. Mm -hmm. It's a battle. It's a battle of attrition, right? It is a battle of attrition, but how does Houston keep coming up with ways to win? Because since 2017, like you said, they have gone deep into the playoffs. And remember 2020, the COVID year, they weren't even supposed to get into the playoffs, two games under 500. And yet they come within an eyelash of a racing a three games to none series deficit in the American League Championship Series. Well, I, I guess they invested in a lot of trash cans. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have enough in twenty one, but they had enough in twenty two. They had enough with uh, Jordan Alvarez. Yeah, that the way that, he that, that way he special. killed Seattle's he killed Seattle's chances in the first two games. Alvarez is a special special bat. Um, mm -hmm. when, when, when we played them in the 21 series, that was the one guy that I was worried about during, I did all six of those games. And the one guy that I was worried about the entire time was that well, where's Alvarez? When's he coming up? Right. You know, Bregman's a solid bat and he's a timely hitter, 
But mm-hmm. Alvarez is that guy that can change the game with one swing. And I'll tell you what, that Kyle Tucker's really turning into into a heck of a player, too. That he is. I think what that he is. Houston Houston, kind of what like what's made Atlanta Atlanta. It's been that pitching. That pitching has been there every mm-hmm. single year. And once again, they've got an incredible rotation. Let's say hi to some folks in the uh, chat. Jonathan Mathis joining us from California. He says Alice Rodriguez is a pretty boy for TV. Well, that's what uh, that's what they were counting on. Uh, Braves Country HD pitchers and catchers report today. A Pizzle, my man in Florida, says go Braves. So there's a there's a uh, Braves fan with you, Mickey Delaney. Right, says, baby. Everyone. And uh, A Pizzle once again says chop on, baby, chop on, absolutely. And what's going to tell the story for the Braves is what I believe tells the story for everyone. Pitching, pitching, and more pitching. Yeah, it's it's been that way since, well, as long as I've been watching the Braves, I date them all the way back. I, I was watching Atlanta Braves in the early 80s, but when they really yeah. took off was the big three in the 90s, right? Mm-hmm. And though they only got the one World Series, when you win 14 consecutive divisions, there's something special about that. Glavin, Glavin you know, Smoltz, uh, Steve Avery. Yeah, Smoltz, Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox were, were the main three, but then you always seem to have a fourth guy. You had Avery, you had Denny Nagel, you had mm-hmm. Kevin Millwood. There, there was always that fourth guy, and that's what they essentially have now. Right now, if they can keep them together, you got Freed, you got Strider. You've got Kyle Wright, who's who's come on. Mm-hmm. Morton's at the end of his deal, but you've got some guys in in that rotation that I I think can stand. Stuff wise, if he can come back and ha- and still has the same velocity, M- Mike Soroka's as good as they get. Right. The question is, after that many Achilles injuries and surgeries, will he have that velocity? Will mm-hmm. he have the control? That's my biggest concern. Yeah, with the with those many injuries, you know, what's his plant foot going to be like? What's his power foot going to going to be like? Is he going to be able to really put it down and put some put some smoke on the ball or take some speed off when he needs to? It's like what we discussed this afternoon with uh, uh, Jordan Hicks from the Cardinals. How good is he going to be, and is he going to be available to be that guy for them in the bullpen? The other thing that I'm looking at with Soroka too that I think is 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 kind of been kind of skated over that a lot of folks don't realize Soroka was well liked in in that clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And to have him back there on a daily basis, you can't really put a number on that, right? But it's if he makes the team at the beginning of the season, he's with the team every day, traveling and whatnot. That helps the chemistry of the team. It hurts losing Swanson. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but if you ever get a chance to see some of the videos, and I'm sure that they're you know they're all over YouTube, but if you get a chance to see some of the videos of Vaughn Grissom interviewing Michael Harris last year, late last year, as as like kind of a goof, he, he was doing it for the local yeah. TV in in Atlanta. The two of them joking around, you you can feel the camaraderie there. Mm-hmm. Got a young core in Atlanta that I think they understand what they have in front of them, and they've got an opportunity to possibly put a dynasty together. Ooh, possibly put a dynasty together. What are the what are some missing pieces that it would take for them to put a dynasty together? What would be the final piece? Well, I think the biggest question everyone has is what's going to happen in left field. And for mm-hmm. a good reason, but I think one of the – what the what the what the casual fan is kind of overlooking is they've brought in a lot of guys to compete for that left field position and it's going to be a battle this spring Mm -hmm. i believe when it's all said and done you're probably going to get more of a platoon than you are an everyday you're i I don't think there's a guy on that roster it's going to go out and hit 35 40 home runs over in left field but you could platoon it. Yeah. If, if you put Ozuna versus lefties and you've got Rosario versus righties, and from time to time, let's say a Sam Hilliard or Jordan Luplo 
make the team. They'll give him days off. What you're looking is looking at to me is a combination of 30 to 40 home runs around 70 the 80 RBI from mm-hmm. that position, but it doesn't have to come from one guy. All right. That's Mac McGee from Braves Country HD. Subscribe to him on YouTube. Just search out Braves Country HD. Not only will he have his fantastic show from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time, and I'm glad to be a part of it each week. He will also try to do three to four Braves uh, games live, uh, play-by-play wise, doing it old school radio style. I'm going to try to do the same with the White Sox. It just depends on the schedule, but we're going to put our heads together and really, really, really get some stuff going. I thank you for coming on, my friend. I look forward to flipping this to a Monday appearance each week, and we get closer to baseball, and we take the fans to and through the season. Yes, sir. We'll see you Monday here, and we'll see you Wednesdays on Braves Country uh, 3 to 5. You got it. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Have a good day. That's Mac McGee joining us here on the program. One more break, and then I still have some thank yous to hand out. This is the Brian Snow Show. Be back in a minute. Where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is the Brian Snow Show. Now, I'm known as the guy who can fix just about anything, but the technology in most appliances requires very special training to fix. And that's why my family has Choice Home Warranty. Choice Home Warranty covers over 25 major home systems and appliances. That's your AC, heating, plumbing, kitchen and laundry appliances, and so much more. Call Choice Home Warranty now before something breaks down. Get protection for your heating, AC, plumbing, kitchen and laundry appliances, and more. Call 800-973-6121. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Do you like pricking your fingers to test your blood sugar levels? No one does, but it's important to maintain your health. And now, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you don't need to prick your fingers anymore. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar three or more times daily, injecting insulin, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now. And if you have Medicare or most major insurance coverage, you may be able to get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar three or more times daily, injecting insulin or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how to end the painful finger sticks and get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is The Brian Snow Show. Oh, it most certainly is. And we're just not ready to write a finish to this episode. Thank you all for joining me. And thank you to Mac McGee of Braves Country HD for joining me this evening. I appreciate you guys so very much. And that's how I'm going to write a finish this evening because there's one very special, special person that I must thank for, well, basically saving my life. And she's done it twice now. And that, of course, is my beautiful wife, Jody. I cannot tell you, and I can honestly say, I cannot tell you where I would be were it not for Jody. When I met her five years ago to my battle and victory over cancer, the last five years wouldn't would have been nothing without Jody. I met her in 2018, and when I heard her voice, particularly when I heard her laugh, I was a goner. I can't talk about her enough. I don't think I ever will. When you find that special someone that's just there for you 
and digs her toes in deep for you, gentlemen, hold on to her. Jody would not give up on me. Even at times I wanted to give up on myself. Even at times I wanted to give up on myself. She has been there. She has had my back. She has been available to me to talk about any and everything. You know, you, 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 you jokingly say to a lot of people, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. That applies in this case for Jody. I would not be here, and I'll say it again. I would not be here, especially with the news that I got this morning. Especially with the news that I'm in remission from pancreatic cancer. It would not have led to this point without Jody making the decision, a hard one, but making the decision to move back up here to Indiana from North Carolina. Y'all know how I feel about North Carolina. But she made the hard decision for me and said, look, we got to get a second opinion on this because I'm not ready to bury you. I need you here. I need you around. I was so distraught. I didn't know what to think. But at the time, my wife was trying to pump me up and I didn't get it at the time. You know what the what they say in a popular song? How could a fella be so blind to what Jody was doing? I was I was totally blind to what she was doing. Totally. And then we met the people that we met. Dr. Rattila Nakib performed the surgery. I had to go through a couple of other a couple of other difficulties, yes. But here I am today. Here I am today and I cannot say thank you to everyone who has sent me well wishes who has sent prayers up to me and for me including my buddy Drew Willingham who's checking out the proceedings tonight love to you my friend and to A. Pizzle to Mickey Delaney to Jonathan Mathis to Victor Locke or as uh, Ray Ray would say on the morning show, Vikalah. To Wise from the Stuck in My Man, uh, Stuck in My Mind podcast, baseball is in my blood. Yep, mine too. To the Hawk TV, the Big Dog Shane Lake. To Mark Hit Sutton, the Professor, Professor Sutton. You need to check out that program too and subscribe there. To WQEE in Atlanta which may be housing two new shows very soon to Eric Collins, my homie in Chicago. <sighs> There's not enough ways in this world where I can say thank you. And now I'll let a couple cats out of the bag here. If I didn't do it already, there will be a new GoFundMe for myself and my family, because as you all know, I am disabled, uh, unable to work right now. So we kind of need your help. And the goal we're going to put up is uh, $60,000. I will have that released tomorrow at 4 p.m. And I'm going to flood everybody with it. Because we need your help to get us to the next spot. I wouldn't be here without you guys in the chat. I wouldn't be here without my children, without my grandchildren, my dad's spirit dwelling within me. But most of all, I wouldn't be here without my beautiful Dr. K, without my Jody. And there's no way I could have survived this without her. So Jody, honey, tall man loves you forever. And that's the show for this evening. I got uh, former Buffalo Bill Nate Turner coming on tomorrow to talk Super Bowl experience and more. This has been the Brian Snow Show at its new time of uh, 6 p.m. Eastern 
5 p.m. Central. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless y'all, and I will see you tomorrow night. Thank you for tuning in to The Brian Snow Show, where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. Yeah.